So you've conducted a survey or a focus group, or you have your database full of information. Now we need to start preparing that data for analysis. So we're doing what's called data engineering. You might also hear it called uh, ETL, extraction, transform, and load. So in our previous videos, we looked at extraction, particularly how to query uh, using MySQL to pull information from a bigger database, from cloud computing like Google Cloud, in order to create that data set for you to analyze. Perhaps you've exported your information from some survey software. Uh, so the example we're going to look at next is from a Google form, so a survey done in Google, and we would export that and then we can transform it. So what we're going to look at in the next couple videos is how to transform your data. We need to clean it, we need to code it, we need to manipulate it. And then we'll get into how to load it into the system so we can do analysis. So this is the first part of our data engineering. When it comes to loading and some additional uh, transformations and extractions, they're gonna be specific to the data source. And so we'll have some separate videos related to pulling information that might be more reality mining, pulling data from uh, like a watch that uh, is tracking your location or pulling information from websites to do web analytics. Uh, so we'll start here with just the basics of a survey or a database in terms of the basics of how to transform, clean, code, and manipulate. So recall the survey that we looked at uh, in previous videos. Uh, this is a survey done for bargaining. So let's say that you are in charge of negotiating for your union. And so you're surveying your members to get their opinions as you go into bargaining. So we looked already at the survey when we created our uh, data dictionaries. So let's keep working with that same survey. So the survey has a range of questions, right? We have ones about top priority, pick from the list. We have ones that are about whether you're part-time or full-time. We have Likert scale questions that ask about your satisfaction. And we have questions that where they can put in whether something is the most important or the least important, so they're ranking in numbers. So this information has all been collected. So I'm just gonna back out here for a moment and I'll show you, here is the Google form. Okay, so in Google, there was, let's say, show you here. So here's the original survey that was filled out, that was sent out. And then, and it's not real, <laughs> just in case you're wondering, this is someone's personal information. Uh, no. All right, so uh, this is the output. The output here is in this Google form. So what we could do is we could go file and we could download as an Excel file and start cleaning it up. Okay, so that's normally how I do this. You want the fastest way to prep your data is what I'm going to show you here, which means it's a bit of mix of Excel and Python. I'm not doing it all in Python because some of these steps are just way faster in Excel. Um, and then some of them are just easier to do in Python. So it's a little bit of a mix just to make this the fastest, most efficient as possible. So I downloaded it to Excel, okay? And then I'm just gonna open that file here. Now, you'll notice this file has a couple changes from what you saw in the Google form. So whenever I am prepping my uh, data, I remove the timestamp. So I deleted the left column because I don't need it. And I just replaced it with a simple respondent. And the idea here is that the first person is number one and on down and I can drag and drop in order to put a label. Rather than this big long timestamp number that labels it, I've just labeled it person one, person two. The other thing I've done is I've added this row at the top to simplify the information. And that's because if I'm gonna dump it into Python to do analysis, I really can't keep the second row that is the whole question. Okay, it's just too much information. I need just more generic labels. So think of it more as the field uh, name or the variable name from your data dictionary. And then this portion here is more of your description. So I can call this Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. I could also make these more generic and say this one is priority. This is contract type. This is satisfaction. 
that might be the better way to go because one of the challenges with my method of Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 is of course remembering what is Q1, what is Q2. Now when I do this, I just keep a handy data dictionary next to me that has the Q1, Q2, Q3. It also then has a uh, more longer name, description. It has my uh, Python type string integer float. It also has my measurement scale, nominal ordinal interval. And this allows me then to make decisions quick because I constantly have that sitting next to me. Uh, if you don't do that, then I recommend you put in more descriptive uh, field or variable names here at the top. So then I would remove this row when I'm ready to start porting it to Python, uh, simply because uh, this it'll get confused. There's only one heading. Uh, it doesn't do well with two, and so you would actually just remove this piece. Okay. Now, before I move it into Python, what I want to do is I want to clean it. So let's just go back to the slides here. Because we need to talk about what does it mean to clean. All right. When you tell people you're cleaning data, they freak out a bit because they're thinking, oh my God, you are scrubbing important information from this uh, and you are changing it. Well, cleaning is not that. What we're doing with cleaning is we're removing any incorrect or mislabeled data. So in the survey, for example, there is a skip question that says, what type of contract do you have? And that's because the part-timers don't get benefits. And so questions about benefits are not relevant to them. So if I look at the data here, notice that someone filled out part-time and then they answered the next couple questions. If it is a survey like in, in uh, SurveyMonkey or Google Forms, then the reason they were able to do this is because I screwed up. So when you build an electronic survey, you can say if they answer a question this way, it goes to this question. And if they answer it this way, it goes to this other question. So you're putting in the skip pattern uh, as the one who's building the survey. If it's a paper survey, of course, you can't control that. So if this was a paper survey, this error, we would have to clean it. If it was in our electronic one and it showed up, it's because we screwed up in the design of our survey, but all is not lost. We can clean it now. So what I do when I clean is I go through and I go through each of these survey questions and we look at what are the possible responses and we look at whether or not they match. So the first thing we check is the skip patterns. Then we verify possible responses. If we have questions that have math, we check the math. And if we have open-ended questions, we check and make sure the format is correct. So let's just take a look at how to do this. So first, let's go to our survey and we're looking for the skip questions. So number two is a skip question. You probably can't see it zoomed out like that. Let's try this. If you responded part-time above, skip to the compensation section. So two is a skip question, so we'll start there. And as I scrub through the rest, I don't see any other skip questions. It looks like everybody fills out the rest. So it's simply that three and four get skipped if they say part-time. So let's go to our data. Now, the fastest way to clean is to turn on filter. So we're going to go to data and we're going to go to filter. Okay. So notice here that it's because I haven't gotten rid of that row that is the question, uh, you'll notice that it's listed here. But see here we have these other four choices listed. Improve benefits, improve working conditions, increase pay, job security. So in a moment we're going to go through each of these to make sure they're the right ones. But first we want to start with question two. So question two, show me only the part time. And notice here, there it, it says that that person who's part time answered question three and question four. So when you're cleaning your data, you would remove this response and this response because they shouldn't exist. So don't add information because you don't know if it's legit. 
but you can remove information so that it doesn't bias the analysis. So you can see here I removed uh, the two and the drug coverage from that particular row because they shouldn't be there. Okay, they shouldn't have answered those questions. So step number one was check the skip patterns. Step number two is to go through and to make sure that as we go through each question, the options match. So I'm gonna see if I can't, see if we can do this on, let's make this go away here. Let's make this smaller. See if we can't put all this side by side. All right, okay. So question one, you can see that there are five options and a write-in option. And we can see here one, two, three, four. And then of course that one is the question because I hadn't removed it. So in this particular case here, it looks like all the choices, improved benefits, improved working conditions, increasing pay and job security are proper responses they could have given. It looks like no one wrote in anything um, in this open option here. We would see extra here. When we go to manipulate, so we're gonna clean, we're gonna code, we're gonna manipulate. If we have write-in options, we wanna separate them into a new variable um, and then label them as other so that uh, we have uh, separated that information. But for right now, it looks like there's no wonky things in here. So we go to the next. This one should only be full-time or part-time, which it is, so it's fine. Question three, how satisfied are you with your current care? It's on a scale of one to five, which matches here, completely dissatisfied to completely satisfied. Um, what we have is that Google has already coded it. We if you have a system that labeled it completely dissatisfied, dissatisfied, then we can code it later and turn it into the one, two, three, four, five. In terms of which healthcare benefits should they prioritize? Notice here that we have listed the ones that are, if I just move it, the ones that are listed plus other. So we want to come back to question four and pull the other out uh, and make them two separate variables. So we'll leave the cleaning of that until after we have pulled out the others. All right, we keep going. So we look at one, two, three. There's an I don't know and a no and a yes. And so if we look at the choices here, do you believe that your pay is similar to the same position in another organization? Yes, no. All right, take that away. So there's an issue here with these questions. If it hasn't been coded yet and they are simply supposed to be yes, no, I don't know, then those shouldn't have numbers. If one, two, three are the codes, then if we look at these here, these haven't been recoded. So here, maybe we had someone who was working on coding, mix up the data set. We do a quick check here and we can see that those one, two, three shouldn't exist. If you don't know if those one, two, threes are something that's already been coded and it's just something weird appearing in your system, then what you need to do is you need to remove them because they don't match what the data is, because you don't actually know if that respondent was meaning yes, no, or I don't know when that one, two, three was created. So unless you can go back to the paper survey or the individual response to figure out what it was, um, then you can re then you remove it because it's inconsistent with the rest of the data. And we just keep going through. Question eight should be one to six. Question B from eight should be one to six. These are all, if I go to the next slide here, these are all the ones where professional dues has to be somewhere between one and six, corporate swag between one and six. So I shouldn't see any numbers that aren't between one and six. If you're doing this and you do see numbers that aren't between one and six, maybe they put a nine, um, then you remove that piece of information. Don't remove the entire row of all of the survey responses from that one person because you can use the rest. You just you remove the one that can't be correct. And since you don't know what the correct is, if you don't have a way to verify it, then you simply just empty it out. Okay, And we would keep going through. Question nine is open-ended. 
So lots of different responses. So we can't really check that one. Question 10 is one through five. It's a scale here, not at all to completely. So it should be between one and five. And in fact, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 are all Likert scale already coded by um, Google to be between one and five. Perhaps your system doesn't have it coded already. It might have labels instead. Okay, we would check and make sure that those are the only words that appear or one through five are the only words that appear. And then as we look at some of the rest here, we did those, let's look 16, what would increase your satisfaction? It should be, op it should be open-ended. 17 is open-ended. In the last month, how many hours of overtime have you worked? We check this with the possible responses to make sure these numbers are all legit. There's only so many hours in a week, or this one's in a month. So how many hours in a month? The answer cannot exceed the actual number of hours in a month. And if there's words in here, so they wrote words instead of numbers, in a paper survey, maybe they did that by accident. In an electronic survey, we should have turned off that capability with validation. So you can, in your survey, you can say only accept numbers, only accept integers, um, so whole numbers. So you can specify that when you build your survey. But if you forgot to put in that validation test into your survey, maybe someone accidentally typed in words, it would show up here and we've removed that unless the word they typed was three or five. And so you can clearly see what number it was supposed to be. So we're checking through with our filter to see if everything is correct for the options that were available to them. So any questions that are Likert scale here have to be between one and five. And we can see, for example, question two, 22 is yes, no, or prefer not to say. So those are the only ones that should appear there. And question 23 is campus location, east, north, south should be the only choices. Question 24 says, how many years have you been with the company? When we look at that one, one, two, three, four, five, those make sense. Someone says they've been here for 300 years. Now, they could have meant 30. They could have meant three. We don't know. So what we would do is we would say, okay, show me that 300. So you just select all and then turn it all off and then say, show me the 300, okay. And then what we do here is we would simply empty this out. We don't know what it should actually be. We don't wanna pretend it's something that it might not be. Uh, so we simply blank it, okay? So when we are doing our, let's go back here. So we check skip patterns. If there were questions they weren't supposed to answer, we clean those out. We verify the possible responses to make sure that we don't have any numbers that shouldn't be there, any words where numbers should be, or any choices that weren't really choices. So we verify the possible responses, don't add. If you don't know and can't verify, just simply empty it out. We check the math. Now, the survey that you just saw didn't have any math, but let's suppose that we had this question. Suppose you could allocate 100 bucks to the following priorities. How much should be allocated between? Improved benefits, improved working conditions, job security, relationship, increasing pay. The total is supposed to be 100. The risk with using these types of questions is you're asking your participant to do math. Try to avoid that whenever possible. Because uh, the challenge, of course, is that if they did not do the math correctly, if we add these up and they do not equal 100, so for example, 20 for benefits, 10 for working conditions, 50 for job security, 30 for pay. When you add those up, you get 110. Well, I don't know where the error is. I don't know which should not, which should be go down by 10. Should improved working conditions be zero? Should improved benefits actually be 10 and not 20? If you have incorrect math here, that response for that particular person, this whole section, the 20, the 10, the 50, the zero, the 30, all of that just goes out empty. Remove it all, not the rest of the questions they answered in the survey, but any input related to this particular question, because you don't know where the error is, it all disappears. So that's why you shouldn't have math in your surveys. You should do the math. Have your respondents do as little math as possible uh, because you don't wanna lose tons of data because of a little screw up. 
So in these type, if you have these types of questions, all of this becomes blank if it doesn't add up to 100 because you don't know where the error is. The last thing we do is the open-ended check to make sure they contain the correct format. That's what we were talking about in terms of the question where it asks for how many hours of overload have you put in, how much extra overtime. Uh, those are supposed to be numbers. If it's not a number, then there's an issue there. And so we're checking the correct format. Should it be text? Should it be words? Should it be, um, should it be text? Should it be numbers? Uh, make sure that it's consistent. And if it's not, and you don't know what it should be, then empty it out. So we just go back here. We have extracted our data. We are transforming it by cleaning it. The next thing we will do is we will put it into Python and code it.